Grab an apron and get to work because you just landed a new job at the local fast food joint. The year is 1989. The hair is bigger, the trans fat is unrestricted, and the safe food handling practices are way more loose. Aquanet legally counts as a type of hairnet. I've dug up some of my favorite training videos from fast food restaurants of the past, baby, and today we're diving in to figure out what they did right, what they did wrong, and have some critical conversation about how we train our employees to keep this place in ship shape. So add another layer of melted cheese, Vanessa, and get cooking. It's time to dive in for another clip breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another clip breakdown. This is a playlist where we dive into our favorite media, movies, and TV and figure out what's going on before my eyes on this day. This video is sponsored by Banished Skincare. Before we get into the clips, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more videos like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down there. That way you never miss new videos from me. Hit the bell, that way you always get updated twice a week when I upload. Also, I'll put a link to more clip breakdowns in the description below. Now, if you've been following me for a minute, then you know that I'm obsessed with retro commercials and anything from the late 80s and early 90s. I've spent full on hours just watching 1990s Happy Meal commercials because they make me happy. I remember the time back when my brain still had a handle on serotonin production. And as I've recently learned, the commercials aren't the only thing you can find on YouTube. There's also plenty of early 90s training videos from restaurants like McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Hardee's, Wendy's. You would think I just got hired at one of these places. I feel as eager as these feathery haired young women who are getting started. And I'm no stranger to quick service restaurants either. You know, I worked at a Dunkin' Donuts for one year when I was 16 in high school and for another year when I was 19 in college. So if you need someone to heat up a roast beef sandwich for you, I'm here if you need me. But when I was training to work at these restaurants, everything was a lot more interactive than these videos seemed to be, which were all kept on VHS tape. That means the corporations had to put a lot of pizzazz and entertainment value into these videos to keep the training employees engaged. If Tommy Bahama is dazing off while we're talking about how to make Wendy's world famous chili, that's how someone ends up with a fingernail in their mouth. I don't know what kind of advertising geniuses were behind the concepts for these training videos, but I'm excited to share with you because they just had their finger on the pulse of everything that was cool in 1989 and 1990. Years that happened before I was born, but I still feel like from watching these, I have a good sense of time and space. For example, 1990, we had just had Madonna's musical hit, Vogue. Garbo, Anne Monroe, and DiMaggio. Which was clearly one of the inspirations for this musical piece that we're about to watch about Wendy's cold drinks. Some might call this video derivative, low budget, lazy, but I actually think that it improves upon Madonna's original music by bringing it back to something I can relate to. Drinks, cold, are you ready? Here we go. Soft drinks, lemonade, water, cold tea, it's up to you, it's up to me. They said to her, no, you look great in your green polo. Just stand in this vacuous white space and give us a little bit of this. Drinks, cold. cold. Are you ready? Let's go! Now, if you know me at all, then you know that I'm obsessed with the beverage, okay? Not only bottled water, but I've got sparkling water, iced tea, decaf coffee, Slurpees from 7-Eleven, the rainwater that I get out of the gutter, whatever. I just love liquids, man. And I just love the part of the song where she's listing a bunch of drinks. Soft drinks, lemonade, water, cold tea, it's up to you, it's up to me. Song of the century, work. Now you might already be thinking, it's pretty simple to fill up a cold drink. I don't know that they needed to make a whole video about it. Spoken like a person who's never heard these amazing riffs from this vocalist. Don't forget to smile when you serve cold drinks. Always say thank you. Guys, who are we gonna get to sing the cold drink song? Shirley sings on the church choir, right? Yeah, Shirley, can you give us a riff? Oh, 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 oh. Sold. Put that on the record, baby. We're ready to tour. I also love how these Wendy's training videos, all of the employees they show, it looks like they're interrupting them during a particularly busy shift. No look has ever so succinctly said, I don't get paid enough for that camera to be in my face. But that's the way it is, okay? Wendy's open seven days a week. We're not shutting this down just so we can shoot a training video. We're co-working. This, it happens as a team. And it's clear because Dave Thomas himself, the founder of Wendy's, is the host of this video. And he doesn't get out of bed for just anybody, okay? He put on his ill-fitting suit, did some labored breathing exercises, and came right into work to tell us what's good about square hamburgers. I think maybe the hand coordination was suffering a little bit, but hey. 
their kids screaming outside. Anyway, here's Dave Thomas, who is better at talking to the camera than he is at grabbing things. My goal has been to serve the best hamburger in the business. So I started with the freshest beef I could find. I started so that I would find the best hamburger in the business. And I did it with Wendy. Uh-oh, that spilled open and spilled everywhere. That happens a lot to me. As I got older, they put Dave Thomas in a lot more commercials and he actually looked healthier later in life. Maybe he stopped eating all those cheeseburgers because he literally can't get through this introduction without being like, I'm gonna order a cheeseburger. In case you didn't know, this is the grill skills video, which is an iconic piece of Wendy's history, mainly because like Madonna in the previous clip, this comes with a hit song. I'm gonna go ballistic on these people. But the main character in this story is Bill, a new Wendy's hiree who is trying to learn the mastery of, you know, the hot top, which is what we here at Wendy's call the grill. I made that up, but let's all call it that. The grill training tape. Why don't you have a look at the tape first and I'll check back with you in a few minutes. All right. Way to go, Bill, your first day and you've already messed up the VCR. But that's actually not the case, so don't worry. In fact, this Wendy's was built on top of a wizard's graveyard. How come in the 80s and 90s, everybody was getting sucked into their technological devices? Was this a real issue? We had Tron, Jumanji, and now this gentleman is slurping a young Wendy's employee into the screen. I'm the kind of person, you can't drag me to another location, okay? If I am at work, I'm not gonna go to a separate place just to learn how to grill some burgers. So it's very upsetting when I'm suddenly turned into magical vapor and pulled into a screen. Who's gonna drag me home? But it was really important that Bill becomes immersed in this piece of training because Wendy's doesn't grill their hamburgers like anyone else. Not like that clown, you know the one. So Wendy's really needs to teach all of its employees the specific way that they flatten down their patties, which is also a great reminder that meat is disgusting. Turn them over easily. We don't want a broken penny, that's a guarantee. Press out the corners, one, two, three, four. Rock it a bit, are you keeping score? Yeah, mash that burger, baby. Huh? Nothing gets me ready to go to work like the sight of gray, frothy meat flapping around on some hot surfaces. Just looking at that meat, I feel like it has so much personality. And you know what? Wendy's agrees with me. The reason you press, you gotta think. When the meat hits the grill, it starts to shrink. We start shrinking when we hit that grill. You know it will. We start shrinking when we hit that grill. You know it will. How come even my anthropomorphized slabs of beef patty have to adhere to the same beauty standards as real human women? That's a lot of makeup for a hamburger to have on. I've never seen anything so terrifying as the Patty Girl backup dancers, which is the name I gave them. Hey, Patty Girl. So nicely marbled, dripping with moisture. Like, what are we talking about? But after a full, long song of grilling and pressing down burgers, we think Bill is finally starting to get the hang of things. Not too little. Not too much. With the little finesse, I think I'm getting the touch. Okay, calm down. Don't try to copy his vocal inflections. That's not translating. Press out the corners nice and wide about half an inch on every side. Again, Bill, just leave the voice to the guy who did the rap. You don't gotta... It takes just about four minutes to cook. Okay, great job pressing the meat. Let's be done with that. Also, why is Bill not terrified that he was just transported into a grill zone Thunderdome? Like, what kind of setting is this? It looks like he's in the middle of a school playground, but at night, that's dangerous. But thankfully, Bill is spending more time trying to master these grill techniques and not worrying too much about trying to be cool with the grill master. Use your tool to double check. It should be great and moist to be correct. Hey! Hey, do you guys wanna do another take to try to get that fist bump right? No, all right, yeah, I'm sure no one's gonna notice. It's hot in here, just like a grill of burgers. Another thing that I love about watching these training videos is you get all of these insider trade secrets. For example, here we have clear evidence about how chili is made at Wendy's. Only serve a great looking patty. Never serve a burger that's looking ratty, but if something goes wrong and your burger's not right, there's no need to get up tight if the dry burger broken or incomplete. 
quickly that baby turns into chili meat. Yeah, the chili vat. That's where you put any of that meat that's burnt or dried out. Also, everyone hail the gay pride hamburger. That's a gay hamburger, that's a straight hamburger, just so everyone knows. These training videos also put me back in the shoes of the service workers who have always been bringing us our Wendy's food. You know, I've never really stopped to think about how one would manage all of those cooking burgers, especially during the lunch or dinner rush of 1989. People are trying to get home and watch Jeopardy! Which is how I found out about the different stages of patty cooking at Wendy's, presented to us by more of these human hamburger hybrids. Only these ones don't have eyes. Stage one, I'm raw, you just laid me down. I'm stage two and I'm getting brown. You turn me and press me just one time, but there's two more stages before I'm fine. I'm stage three, you press me twice, just one more stage before I'm nice. Stage four, I'm hot, I should be done, looking good like I should so you can serve me, son. I'm stage five and I'm still alive, but serve me soon and don't be slow. I've only got one minute to go. Tag yourself, I'm stage one. Stage one, I'm raw, you just laid me down. Although I also love stage five, still alive. Stage one is me on Friday, stage five is me on Monday. And on Wednesdays, I'm stage three, juicy and round. Well, that micro dose that Bill took before work is starting to wear off, which is great, because the video's just coming to an end. You'll be tough on the grill, yes you will. Mr. Bill. 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 Bill, the tape is over. Bill, you've been staring at pure static for 10 minutes. Did our Dave Thomas mental evaluation somehow fail? But three musical interludes was not enough for this Wendy's training video. They still had more mileage to get out of the fact that a spatula kind of looks like a guitar. I won't get burned in the rush Because I don't give up When you're feeling the heat Okay, I don't know what's wrong with me, but 1989 Grillmaster. I think he's the hottest one in this video. This poor guy in the red shirt, again, doesn't even know he's being filmed. Like, they really just went in at rush hour and were like, hey, sing these words. Pretend you're singing about grill skills. I'm trying not to give E. coli to all of Chicago. Can we maybe just let me focus on that? When you got orders to fill, you need the water. Let that big fluffy hair hang right over my food. And you, sir, why don't you shake hands with the whole restaurant before handling that raw meat again? When I worked at Dunkin' Donuts, we had to pull on plastic or rubber gloves before we touched anything. And these people are getting in there like nail beds and all. They're like, oh, a little dead skin, a little grime. We love it. That's the Wendy's way. I'm gonna get sued by someone for putting these up. This next McDonald's training video seems like it's from even earlier on in the 80s based on the song that it's parodying. But it's good to know that they never stopped reaching to that top 40 chart to try to make these videos interesting. In fact, this video starts with a really cool cinematic opening where a bunch of dancers are standing near a fog machine. Also, I can tell that that thing lifting up is just the security gate from their loading dock. They're like, yeah, this works. Not only is this a song with a low rent Michael Jackson impersonator set to the tune of Beat It, but it also features a robust group of very earnest jazz dancers who fill the whole space with magic and whimsy. Yes, believe in it while you wipe down that fire hydrant. Also, it's somehow a comfort to know that every single McDonald's forever through all of time has had those same brown tiles that I remember from a, being a kid. Just clean it, clean it. Do I look like Michael Jackson when I do that? Just clean it. This is what he did. Clean it, everybody's clean and clean it. Also, this was well before we learned that Michael Jackson was straight up that was not in any of the commercials. Also, would you guys be okay if I did commentary on some music videos? Because I just saw Dixie D'Amelio's Be Happy. And actually I saw a couple other vlogs on her channel that I thought were worth commenting on because they were not good. I love this because they gave us the whole song with rewritten lyrics and these dancers are just killing it. They're giving me serious Julia Stiles and Save the Last Dance vibes.
feel like I recreated that perfectly, in fact. Look at me, I'm glowing. Partially thanks to my Banish skincare, which I'll talk about now for just a minute. Banish is an awesome skin positive skincare brand that I found out about for their awesome micro needling tool called the Banisher 2.0. This features 24 karat gold plated bristles that actually press into the skin and help promote collagen production over time. This helps plump up the skin to give me a glowy look and reduce the appearance of acne scars, which is something that I'm always trying to do. But outside of the tools, we also get really great natural products. My favorites include the vitamin C beauty elixir, which is great for brightening and reducing the appearance of brown spots and the fighter gel, which is an all natural blemish treatment that I use either all over the skin or just as a spot treatment when I'm having a breakout. It's really gentle, it's minty and cooling and it smells amazing and it just goes on clear and works great. I've been a Banish ambassador for a while now. You can check out some other videos on my channel, but if you're interested in looking at any of these things, make sure you use the link in the description below. You can also use the code Nick to save money on your starter kit or anything else you wanna choose. Thanks again to Banish for sponsoring this video and keeping my skin looking amazing all the time. This next training video is also from McDonald's and it features a really meta concept where we're actually behind the scenes of them making the training video. And as they do this, we learn some different ways that McDonald's employees try to make it great. But not before we get an introduction from Michael Jordan himself, who has nothing to do with this video, wearing a shirt that I'm almost positive my dad wore and in front of a background that I definitely had behind me for some school pictures in the 90s. Michael Jordan is basically comparing himself to a McDonald's employee. Hmm because both of them are trying to put on a show and give the people what they want. One of them is paid a million dollars per second and the other is struggling to feed their kids. So you see the parallels are just like really easy to draw. This was the first training video I could find where they actually tell you outright how to deal with rude customers and they go a step further by reenacting what a rude customer might look like. Hi, what can I get for you today? Yeah, I want a filet of fish, french fries and a small Coke and nothing else, okay? Well, will that be for here to go? Oh, no. What's wrong, Lisa? When a customer comes on strong like that, we, we've really got to handle him with, with kid gloves. Yeah. People like that are almost always looking for a fight. <laughs> that guy is the original Karen. He was the blueprint. It just was 20 years early, 30. <gasps> Time flies. This was the best part for me about working in retail. I mean, it sucks. Being exposed to rude customers is not fun. I don't wish that on anybody. But it was really fun when you got to be super nice to them back and they felt like a jerk. But I would say the nice thing, but in my mind, I'm saying the real true thing. That's what you need to know. Yeah, I'd like a fillet a fish, a small coke, and a fry, and nothing else, okay? Is that a large fry? I said a small fry. Well, I'm sorry, sir, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you because you didn't say it, you balding piece of sh Roll the tape back. A small coke, and a fry, and nothing else, okay? So do you want to come back correctly and give me that order without an attitude, sir? Thank you. Of course, that's not what Ray Kroc would want. He wants us to make every customer feel like they're special. They're the first person to ever walk under those golden arches. Oh yes, sir, I didn't hear you. The cockroaches won't even feed on your body once you die because you're made of gold. That's what mean customers want to hear from people. Like when you mess up their order, they're like, grovel for me. For our last training video of the day, we're going outside of the burgers and fries of McDonald's to try something that the family has been gathering around at the dinner table since the early 80s. I made that date up. Watching this really long video taught me two things. One, Pizza Hut in 1989 had way too many pizzas on offer. Like how many different ways could they think of to layer cheese and meat and grease? And two, they were very lucky to have this latest recruit because man, she was born to make pizzas. I've never seen someone so earnest. Actually, I learned a lot from this video, including what the secret ingredient is for all Pizza Hut pizzas. This amazing substance is fairy dust, and it magically transforms our ingredients into the perfect Pizza Hut pizza. Come on. Okay. Actually, it's a careful blend of cheese and spice, but it really does give our pizzas that extra delicious touch. You can check the spec chart for the right amount. You really do call it fairy dust. 
That's right. That's right, just like the DEA certified slang word for heroin. I'm guessing after the 80s were over, Pizza Hut wasn't calling this powder fairy dust anymore. Just call it cheese, maybe. Now, if any of you out there still work at a pizza joint or a pizza franchise like Pizza Hut, can you let me know if this is still how you all handle your dough? You form the dough into a flat circular patty by turning the dough around in your hands and folding the outside edge under. Then you flatten the patty to about an inch high by pressing down on top of it. And take care to let the crumbs from the inside of your hand creases get pressed in there real good. When I'm watching these videos, all I can think of is like bare hands, ah, unclean surfaces, ah. What I really love about the Pizza Hut training videos is how they always practice what they preach. Then you drop it into the top chute on the dough roller. Keep your fingers away from the chute. It's very important your hands come nowhere near the chute. I would know. This next part was fun because it just reminded me of those paper liners they used to put at the bottom of pizza boxes. If it's a carryout, you have to use one of those boxes. If the pizza is going to be served here, you'll put it back in the pan and place the pan and a spatula on a cork pad in the pickup area. The server will do the rest. No, the customer will do the rest when they bite into my delicious pizza. <laughs> Don't get cocky, kid, okay? This is still Senor Pizza Hut's pizza, okay? His name is on the box, it's his pizza. I don't care who made it. What do you guys think of these training videos? Let me know if you'd like me to dive into more retro commercials or videos like this. But I'll be back with more movie commentary in just a few days. By the time you're seeing this, I'm on vacation in New Hampshire visiting my parents, so say hi to me there. But if you liked what you're watching today, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you wanna see even more clip breakdowns just like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So click that bell icon so that you always get notified when they're new and fresh and hot. Like a pizza filled with human hair. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for cleaning it with me today. I will see you next time.